Hi there, and welcome to Model 3. This is a very important model dedicated to meshing, but not only meshing, but also some preliminaries and mesh quality assessment. So before moving on, let's remind you the workflows of CFD simulation. Remember, everything starts from a geometry description, okay? So you have your solid model, okay? So we address this in Model 2, then generate the mesh, and run the simulation okay and finally you visualize so everything as you can see the starting point is the geometry so everything depends on the geometry you need good geometries okay so that's why i also address you know a uh, solid modeling uh just to give you some figures about uh the percentage you know use the time used to in each of these phases so geometry generation and mesh generation take as much as 80% of the user time, okay? So this is very intensive uh, stage, okay? The user use, you must be sitting in front of your computer, okay, doing all these steps. Instead, the case setup is quite fast, okay? And then solution monitoring, and then qualitative and quantitative is post-processing, okay? That can be also very, very time, time consuming, okay? Uh, you might realize that this do not add to 100 because it depends now, but also this is based in our personal uh, experience. Then let's move to the to the tools that we have in, in OpenFont. So in OpenFont, in OpenFont, you, you, you find the following applications for mesh and generation. You have block mesh, snappy X mesh, flammy X mesh, and flammy quad mesh. So in this training, we're going to focus mainly in a snappy X mesh. Okay, this is the most important tool. And we're going to briefly address block mesh just to generate background meshes. So now the starting point for a snappy X mesh. But also we're not going to go into detail. So most of the time we're going to focus here. Uh, also, as a meshing package that you have or library that you have in OpenFund, you can convert meshes for another format. So to name a few formats, you have it here, okay? So if you don't, if you don't want to use the tools that comes with OpenFund, you can use external tools with no problems. So by the end of this model, you will realize that you are going to use a snappy X mesh for tricky geometries, stuff like this, and block mesh for very easy geometries. You have like, a cube or a pyramid that you see here. Okay, so but block mesh is just very easy geometries, difficult geometries or industrial geometries. You go and use a snappy X mesh. So now let's talk about some mesh and preliminaries. So the idea of doing the mesh you now is this stage step is called domain discretization or also mesh generation. It just consists in dividing the physical domain into a finite number of discrete regions called control volume or cells in which the solution is sought. And depending on the method, the solution can be <clears throat> can be cell-centered or no center. Later in, in model six, we're going to address that. So basically you have each cells, you will have the domain. And it's intuitive from here that the finer the mesh, okay, the better the solution or not better the solution. You are going to reduce truncation errors, but remember that you have models. And models also have some requirement for meshing. So there are some models that they work very well with fine meshes, and so there are some models that do not work very well for with fine meshes. So be careful with that. And also the mesh you can address uh, is fixed bodies or moving bodies. There is no problem. It works in the same way. So the steps of uh, generating the mesh are three. So first, generate your geometry. Then go to the mesh generation stage where you can decide the surface mesh size volumetric refinement you can add refinement regions inflation layer boundary layer and so on and all and then you define boundary surfaces and this is very important because you need to tag those surfaces where you want to apply your your boundary conditions otherwise it's not possible to apply boundary conditions so First, you start with this geometry, but you, with your geometry, remember that you need a watertight geometry, a geometry with no holes. And actually, you can do the mesh if you have holes, but remember that your mesh will leak, and also you are going to do the mesh inside or outside, you know, depending if you are doing internal or external, okay? So be careful with that we want a closed watertight uh, geometry. Then you create the mesh, so see that in this case, we're generating also 
uh, refinement region around the, around the body, also we have refinement around the surface and so on. And then you need to assign boundary conditions. And in OpenFoam that is done in this file in constant polymesh, you have the file boundary that we have manipulated already in model one. But now here also we're going to, to uh, revisit that and modify that, assign the, the right type and right name. Okay, so you need to give a name. So in this case, we call it inlet, outlet, top, bottom, airplane, left and right. And then you assign a type. So might be all of them except for airplane will be wall, will be patch and then the airplane will be wall. And then you go into the folder zero and you assign all you know, the correct values. Then there is another question. What cell type should I use? Okay. So honestly, there is no restriction in the cell time, okay, as CFD today, as what we have today. So many years ago, yes, there was a, a big difference, but thanks to the advance and computer power and also the methods, okay, algorithm, today all of these cells will give you the, the, the <clears throat> the same results. However, there is a preference not to use extra cells. These are the ones that probably will give you the best results, okay? But it will give you a small improvement. But have in mind that though all of them will generate, will give you a good solution. Uh, Snappy X mesh is based in hexa cells, okay? So this is the kind of meshes that uh, Snappy will generate. They are hexa dominant. So now let's talk about what is a good mesh, okay? So there is no written theory when it comes to, to mesh generation and mesh quality assessment. So basically everything depends on, on user uh, experience and trial and error, okay? So the measuring, the measuring mesh generation is, is, is trial, okay? Because later when we go into, into, into turbulence, you will see that you will need to generate a mesh, compute a solution, see if some quantities are okay, and then remesh, or is, if it is okay, you keep going, okay? Uh, and the standard rule of the tone is that the element shape and distribution should be pleasant to the eye, okay? So as you plot your mesh, it will be something that you will see, okay, this is nice, okay? There is symmetry, there is nice change of size between large and small cells, as you see in this image, okay? So you see that this, you look at this, it's pleasant. However, this is not enough, okay? Okay, in a standard way, okay, we need to rely, rely on some metrics. So always the f first step, always a like, or probably the last step, depends now what you're looking at, is look at the mesh, but also let's measure some metrics. And the, the most widely used metrics are these, orthogonality, excuseness, aspect ratio, and smoothness. We're going to see what are those, Okay, however, have in mind that there are many more metrics, some of them that are quite difficult to, to, to interpret. However, they can give you a lot of information. Stuff like the Jacobian matrix, determinant, flatness, equivalence, condition number, and so on. Okay, there are many metrics, but these are the most important ones. Um, paradoxically, it seems that uh, it is much, much easier diagnosing back meshes than good meshes, okay? So knowing when a, a mesh is bad is really easy. Knowing when a mesh is, is good is, is tricky. Okay, so let's talk about these metrics, the ones that we're going to use and the one that we're going to see in open from that I reported. So the first one is mesh, no, mesh orthogonality, okay? So no orthogonality or orthogonality is the angular deviation or vector S, okay? located at the fa phase center, okay, from the vector D connecting the two cell centers P and N, okay? So it's this deviation, it's this angle. So you have this vector D connecting P and N, and then this vector normal here to the phase. So it's just this angle. So ideally, we want to have this angle equal to zero, means Okay, they are orthogonal. It's a perfect mesh, but that is the section rather than the rule. Okay, so usually you're going to have this, and this no orthogon orthogonality or non orthogonality it affects mainly the Laplacian, not the diffuse terms and gradients computation. It will add numerical diffusion. And something interesting that is this angle is 90 degrees. See that the volume or the area of this cell will be zero. And that is a problem, okay? That is a singularity. So, so usually you are going to have large angles with bad quality meshes. Then we have mesh skewness. Mesh skewness basically is this deviation here. So you have this vector connecting cells P and N. 
and this vector will intersect this face in a location different from the phase center. So this deviation is what we call skewedness, okay? So this skewedness will affect the interpolation of the self-centered quantities of phase centers, and it affects mainly convective and diffuse stir, but to a lesser extent, diffuse stir. It adds numerical diffusion and wiggles to the solution, okay? And this Excuseness. A single cell with large excuses can give you a lot of problems. It's the same for with non orthogonality. A single cell with no large non orthogonality can give you a lot of problems. So that's why we want good meshes. Then we have aspect ratio. Okay, the aspect ratio is just the ratio you now between the sizes of the cells. So this will smear gradient computation, okay? So large aspect ratio, they add a lot of numerical diffusion, okay? So if you are doing RANS or URA simulations, large aspect ratio are acceptable. Instead, if you are doing this and less, be careful because you don't want to add too much numerical dis dif dissipation. So usually you have this large aspect ratio when you are resolving boundary layers, okay? It's clearly not. You have the mesh very, very fine close to the wall, okay? But to this effect to the lesser to a lesser extent the stability of the solution. Now, and then we have a smoothness, okay? That also known as suspension ratio, growth factor, or uniformity. So it's just the transition between small and large cells. Okay. So usually this is what we want. We don't want this. So what happens, you have some sort of ideas that you are going to smear gradients computation. So you are here, so numerical diffusion. So you lose some information there. So ideally you want something like this. Okay. So 1.2 is also an equivalent to 20% of change between uh, consecutive cells. Okay. And then we have some other factors that you might look at add from time to time. That is the align cell alignment with the flow. So for instance, look at in this case, that is you have the flow coming in this direction. And as you are using extra cells, okay, the truncation errors here are very low. Okay, so because see that the cell center, now the flow is aligning, aligning here with the phase center. Instead, if you change the direction vector and now the flow comes from this direction here, it's not aligning anymore, okay? So in this case, if you have the flow horizontal, you are going to have this truncation error. But now if the flow is coming like this, you are eliminating this truncation error, but now you are adding that here, okay? So as you see, exa uh, cells, they are not always good, okay? But this is this is not very important, but if, if you can align these cells with your flow, it's strongly recommended, but sometimes impossible. So don't think too much about this, just general information. So striving for quality, okay? So what I was telling you that as is today, you know, the state of the art of CFD today, every single cell, tetra, X, and poly that I showed out here, they, should, they will give you exactly the same results here. But at the beginning of the CFD, the difference was large. And actually at the beginning of the CFD, it was not possible to use tetra, okay? Everything was X and meshes, in particular, a structure, a structure solver, a structure meshes. But then over the years, a lot of development in software, okay, in hardware. Now, now we can compute with all type of cells with the same accuracy. Uh, important that you should also uh, uh, control how you generate your mesh. So it's extremely recommended not to add more cells where the solution, where you are expecting to have the largest changes in your your solution, okay? So it should be something adaptive. And that's why it, it is kind of a, a trial and error iterative process. Now you generate one mesh, probably it's not ideally, you go, you redo and add more cells, okay? But usually you add more cells where you know that the solution is changing more. Uh, then here you have some other guidelines that I can well skip here, okay? Later you can read it and a few quotes that you have here. I really like uh, the first one, no, a good mesh might not lead to the ideal solution, but we are very sure that if you have a bad mesh, we'll always give you a bad solution, okay? Then also this quote, who owns the mesh owns the solution. Pretty much is true, okay? If you have a good mesh, it's quite sure that it's likely probably better that you're going to have a good solution. And this is a personal one, avoid the Gigo, uh, Gigo syndrome, okay? Garbage in, garbage out, okay? so. That means that 
you give garbage, you're going to get garbage. So now let's talk about uh, mesh quality assessment in open phone. Okay, so in open phone, uh, these values we have, they are, they are hardwired in, in there in the library. So you are going to have uh, aspect ratio and orthogonality and skew, skewness, okay, as we studied previously. I see that they are hardwired. So you have it here, okay, you have the minimum and maximum here define it. So when you are doing the mesh or using the utility to check the mesh, which is check mesh, we have used it already, and is the values reported and larger than this one, a check mesh will give you, you know, like a warning or, a, or an error. Does, it, that doesn't matter. That is just telling you that be careful that you have large values that might affect your your quality of the solution, but that doesn't mean that you cannot run this, this simulation, okay? Our own personal quality metrics, okay, maximum values are these. No orthogonality, 80, and excuses, 8. We don't use this one. You, we can go much higher, okay? We know very well how to control, okay, the numerics. But it's always recommended to, to if you have large values, try to reduce the, the mesh to improve those those values. So to ch check the mesh quality in OpenFund, you have this utility check mesh, and this utility will give you a lot as we have seen so something very important that is you have is if your mesh doesn't pass a check it will give you know a warning or an error what is the, the problem but also will save those sets in this directory in constant polymesh you can save those sets and then you can visualize that information okay so this is very important to diagnose or to see where you, you need to have final meshes uh, to visualize those sets in, 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 in Paraphone or Paraview, well, in Paraphone will be this case, you have, we can do it in two ways. So you, we launch Paraphone, when you launch it, see that you have this option here, include sets, and automatically you can access these sets. Okay, so in this case, see that you have non ortho faces and union point sets. So these are the problematic ones. The other way is to convert, is to convert those sets into BTK format. So if you do it in this way, you can use Paraview. So these options are only available if you use Paraphone. Okay, remember this that we, we saw previously. <clears throat> it's only with Paraphone, but if you use Paraphone built in or Paraview, you can convert and then you can open those sets here, okay? Using using BTK format. So basically this is the way how you use this command. So you just need to know that you have those sets those sets are generated automatically using check mesh. And by the way, check mesh does not repair those errors, okay? So these are example sets that you can have. You convert it to BTK and then you can open that. So when you convert to BTK, you're going to create a new folder called BTK and that's all. Later, we're going to see that. So for instance, see this case that we run check mesh, giving you the number of cells and everything. It's telling you that this mesh is, is tetra dominant. So in previous case, we have exa or a mixture between that, that. Here we have a tetra mesh, okay? Number of cells and see that now it's telling you that here you have problems, you use points, okay? That means that those points, are, they are not connected to any cells, okay? So it's something that happens in, in the mesh in the meshing tool. This is not a problem, but they can be erased. And then here, see that you have here, you, are, you have here non-orthogonality, okay? So it's telling you that number of severely non-orthogonal cells, telling this many cells, and then the maximum value. So see that it's telling you that it's fail mesh check. This doesn't mean that you cannot run. It's just be careful that this may affect your numerics, okay? But you can still run. So always save this one, and when it detects this fail uh, uh, mesh sets, it will save that in the constant polymesh sets that we're going to see later. So we're go let's work in this case just to see those steps. So basically we have this airplane geometry, and see that here we have two faulted sets. Here, related to the skewness or no orthogonality, and here the on news points, okay? So let's see how to do this and what is reported in a screen. So here you have the location. So you go to your cases, mesh quality, M1. Okay, or here, here we have it open. And here you have a few uh, scripts. So the first one, so you can open these scripts, okay? 
So you would see that this one is to show you how to mirror. So here we have half of the domain as you want to mirror. Here you have this one. So this one mirror will read a dictionary mirror mesh. I'll be careful. So let me add here. It reads a dictionary called mirror mesh dictionary. Okay, so you can see what is happening there. But then in this one, you have the step. So see that we're converting the mesh. We run check mesh and then check mesh will create those faulty sets and then we convert it to BTK in this way. So let me copy and paste this here just to show you. So see that we convert the mesh, there is no problem. And then when you generate check mesh, when you run check mesh, see what happens. It's giving you this information and see that it's telling you that you have this problem. So you have this you know use points that this is related to topology. So usually topology these are errors that you need to repair. But this one you know points is not a big deal. Okay, you can you can get your way around. Okay, but the, these ones here, okay, also you can run with no problem, but be careful that they will affect your the mesh quality. So see that when you run this one, and as you enter in the, in, in, in the folder constant polymesh, see that you have this folder here, and here you have these two sets. So you can visualize those sets. Just to show you, first is you use Paraphone. Remember that Paraphone is a little bit slower, but it has access to this plugin to access sex and so on. So see that you can click here, include sets. And now you can access the faulty sets. Okay, so as you go here down, see that you have these two sets. So let me deselect everything. These are the faulty sets. And see that you have the faces, okay? These are the faces with the large orthogonality. We don't see the news point, so probably I like to, instead of watching like that, uh, I like to, to use here a sphere, no, a glyph. And here you see better. So let me put here 0 0.05 and see that you have all the points or faces or cells that are faulty. So let me open a new one. And this is geometry, okay? It's a nice geometry, okay? It's a rather coarse mesh. Okay, so fading, let me select. And this is what we have, okay? So see that usually in this kind of geometry, it is the leading edge and trailing edge where you have this large skewness or orthogonality. And for some reason, you have here some unused points. See that here we have just half the geometry. You have the other dictionary that shows how to mirror this mesh. I'm not going to run it. You can run it later. Okay, but let's say that if I launch now Paraphone built-in, which is the option I recommend, it's much faster. However, this option cannot access those sets. So what we need to do is to convert it to BTK format. And these are the 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 other steps. So see that font to BTK, I know that non ortho faces are, it's a face set, so minor face set, convert that to BTK, and see that you are going to have a new folder, and here you have the cells or, or faces in BTK format, and here you have the points also in BTK format. So now you can go Paraphone, build in, ah, sorry, it's not like this, it should be like this, build in, apply. Okay, so let's go here and let's, let me select only the geometry, okay. So this is our nice geometry, and now you can open this in BTK format. So let me open the non ortho faces. You can change the color as you want. So you know now when you do the mesh, these are the problema problematic regions. I like likely to repair to fix that problem. You will need to have finer meshes or control the transition. You can also open 
the unions points okay so this also the btk format you can open that also using the paraphone you know, the normal way and usually to visualize this when we add glyph we put an sphere there and there you go you have your news points and we can also change you now the color as you want here let me add and this is it okay so you have it there so this is how you control the mesh okay so always look at always when you generate or before running the the, the case always run check mesh you have to be sure that you are with, within you know, the acceptable values then also here in, in, in you have this script run mesh 2 so this is just to show you mesh manipulation okay but i don't recommend you to do this you have to be very careful so here we are basically removing the faulty sets so see that here we're using this command called topo set to select those uh, so this one will read a dictionary okay so as you go here called topo set topo set c system topo set one so it's doing some selection and it's selection the is selecting the unused points okay and then you have this one that is reading okay the orthogonal so it's selecting those faces so see here you can see <clears throat> you can see the syntax what it's doing now so you select that and then you use this other command success mesh that is going to remove this selection so this is a way to remove those cells so is you, you can remove the point so let me show you this step okay so if i go like this okay let me close here but be very careful this is not recommended you need to be very sure what you are doing see that i'm running this one okay okay phone phone clean ay 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 Oh, clean tutorials and let me copy and paste again okay i don't know drum mesh two okay so converting okay so see here that okay ta -ta -ta -ta, it's doing the conversion and voila so you see that after in this in this step this one okay <clears throat> it wasn't working i need to check it but it's not a problem but see the second step is selecting the cells then doing some renaming and here we run check mesh and see that after running check mesh see that you don't have any more those those errors and actually also the on news points also everything was removed but basically we manually removed those points if we launch now powerful and you will see what happens here and why you need to be careful when, when doing this so basically we remove the cells the faulty cells okay so it's here okay so this is now your actual surface is something like this see so that you have the surface but also you remove all the cells that are were attached to those surfaces and you get here this so this is not not okay okay so you are removing the faulty cells you when you run check mesh okay you are happy but what you have here is from the aerodynamic point of view is not okay so be careful with this method okay just this is just to illustrate some manipulation be very careful that you can do this if you have one single cell or two single cells you can do it and very small cells but large cells like this it's very dangerous and likely it's, it's not okay it's going to give you wrong results but you can see that you can also manipulate and remove those cells so that's all for this case okay so basically just focus in this one run mesh one check mesh you will see that it will give you a faulty steps and then you can just convert it and visualize those cells okay so it's better to go and redo the mesh rather than removing those steps so that's all for this case thank you very much for your attention and see you in the next videos bye